Oh, that is a big statue. Is that on our ship? How much fuel do we use lugging this statue around? Fuel doesn't matter if you worship the Emperor. <laughs> One has the best view of the cathedral from here. Mesmerizing, wouldn't you say? An impeccable manifestation of the God Emperor sublimity. Uh, you're in a dialogue. Here you can learn more about current events, influence the character you're speaking to, or even alter the course of the game's narrative. Your character's personal story depends on the dialogue choices you make. Available dialogue options are displayed on the right. Select a reply by clicking on it or pressing the digit on your keyboard. Got it. Uh, are you questioning the Emperor's fuel economy? That's heresy. <laughs> uh, truly an awe-inspiring sight. Mm -hmm. That is the purpose of all temples to the God Emperor. To inspire awe and reverence. For it is the duty of his servants to persevere in their tireless service until they are presented with the chance to give their very life for the master of humanity. <sighs> Allow me to introduce myself. Kunrad Voitfeer, master of whispers, in Sounds the employ of her play. ladyship rogue trader Theodora von Valencius. At your service. I haven't had the pleasure of speaking with you in person before. You can hover your cursor over highlighted words to learn more about them. The tooltips that appear can help you better understand the world of the game or its mechanics. Words are highlighted when they first appear in a text. Scroll up the dialog box to see the desired highlighted term again. Okay. Alright. Um... My name is Mark Von Luck, and as to avoid any misunderstanding, I am a sanctioned psycho. I am aware of that fact. It would have been unacceptable negligence to have overlooked such a detail when compiling your profile. Fate bestowed upon you powers of witchcraft, and a duty to use them for the good of the Imperium. Yours is truly an unenviable lot. I will be frank with you. I you may forget your past titles, no matter who gave them to you, or what their origins are. From the moment you and the other candidate were brought aboard this void ship, your fate changed. You now serve Lord Captain Theodora von Valencius and carry the burden of an heir of his house. Henceforth, you share your dynastic name with her ladyship. Bear it with honor. Wait, so am I Muck von Luck von Valencius? <laughs> von, 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 von. Uh let's see what that uh You have a curious title, Master of Whispers. What are your responsibilities? To put it plainly, I am the head of the network of spies and informers who serve the interests of House von Valencius. I uncover weak links both among Lady Theodora's retinue and in the ranks of her rivals. I eliminate our vulnerabilities and exploit those of others. Hmm. Mm -mm. You say I am one of the rogue trader's heirs, so there is another candidate? There is. And you will meet him soon enough. I assume you had some gold in mind when you decided to seek me out. Let us address it. But of course. I have come to invite you to a meeting with Lady Theodora. I imagine you have many questions for your patroness, and I'm sure she has just as many questions for you. It is regrettable that you haven't yet had an opportunity to speak. It has been an arduous voyage thus far. The Lord's Captain and Master Edelthrad von Valencius are conversing on the observation platform. Let us join them there. 
Uh, movement. Move your character by clicking a left mouse button on the screen. A symbol will appear and your character will move toward it. If the spot you chose is inaccessible, it will appear in the closest accessible location. Alright, so WASD moves the mm, what lies screen. Beyond? Interactable objects. Some objects in the game can be interacted with in a special way. They are marked with specific icons. Some icons allow you to study. Others will transfer the character to neighboring locations or launch a small event. These icons become visible when your character is standing close to the interactive object. Click left mouse button on the icon to perform the associated action. Some interactive objects, such as doors or chests, are not always marked with icons, but the cursor changes when you hover over them. Hover your cursor over the object. If the cursor changes, the object is interactable. Hold tab to highlight objects your character can interact with. A massive conference table, obviously crafted from real wood, a resource of incredible value aboard a void ship. Curiosity sings in my veins. The sacred mechanism has been interfered with without due reverence. The duration of the data processing cycle is tripled. Incomprehensible information is displayed on a large screen above the cogitators. You can make out references. Oh, well, muck me then, okay. Patience! My nerves are frayed! Is that my guy screaming? <laughs> Patience! One of the Fon Valencia's trophy rooms. Perhaps you would like to take a look around. Oh, they got tanks in here. What's happening? Whoa! Are they supposed to do that? The servitors have gone berserk. That's a great response. Double over and hold your head while uh, the guy with the chainsaw lumbers toward you. That is an absolutely great response to that situation. <laughs> Watch this spectacle unfold! <laughs> what is this voice we chose? <laughs> You've been ambushed. To survive in the grim darkness of the far future, you'll have to face enemies of all kinds and fight for your life. These hints and tutorials will familiarize you with the combat system. Click the button at the top of the screen to start the battle. Oh! Oh! He gets to hit twice. Joint analysis. Movement and combat. All battles of the game are turn-based and placed on a grid. On their turn, a character can move, attack, and use their abilities. Select a cell within the highlighted area and double-click left mouse button on it to move the character there. Movement points determine how far you can move on their turn. One MP corresponds to one cell on the battlefield. Moving diagonally is more costly. Every diagonal cell is two movement. Okay, at the beginning of each turn, movement points are restored to their max value. Note that once a character starts moving, this action can no longer be cancelled. What weapons do I have, though? I've got a stub revolver. Range 6. Does it tell me before I move if I'll be able to shoot from there? Hold on. 1, 2, one, two three, four, five, six. Oh, there's like a red line. Oh, okay, okay. Wait, I mean, can I can I shoot from there? I'm confused. Range 6. Like that's absolutely more than 6 range, but there's a line. Does the line change color? It looks like it might change color, so maybe... Okay. Through the smoke and gunfire! Main system, activating combat I thought that was the game for a sec. Hi, Shugo. Uh, action points. To make attacks and use abilities, they must be action points. Their total is displayed on the panel at the bottom of the screen. Every attacker ability has a certain AP cost associated with it. The number of squares next to the uh, icons of attack actions and other abilities indicates their AP cost. At the start of each character's turn, their APs are restored to max value. To attack, left mouse button the single shot icon on the weapons panel, 
at the bottom of the screen. Hover the cursor over an enemy. A tooltip will appear showing your chances of hitting and the possible damage you deal on a successful hit. Click left mouse button on the enemy to fire. Uh, the amount of damage your character deals depends on the parameters of the weapon they're using. The effectiveness of the shot depends on the distance between you and the enemy. And when the target uh, is hit with a single shot, you'll see two areas denoting the weapon's effectiveness and max firing ranges. Certain abilities in the game are considered attack actions. It can only be used once per turn unless affected by specific talents or other abilities a character might have. If a character performs an attack action, they will not be able to attack again and lose their many movement points till the start of their turn. That costs... Where do I see my AP? 4 AP. Okay. An anonymous user gifted a tier 1 sub to the Shugo. Thank you, anonymous user. Um... I'd like to cast strong arm on that guy. Oh, what? He's got like actual like metal on his arms. Okay. Voice of command. Force an ally to push themselves, increasing their characteristics by plus 13 for one round. And I get all AP back, right? So I might as well use this. Let's see. You! I command you to go punch that guy. I will be shooting him. Within I missed. <laughs> We're off to a great start. Your character missed. To increase hit chance, equip your character with a decent weapon and place them on a vantage point. Fuck you. Abilities and talents that improve the weapon skill characteristic will help you hit more in combat. For improved marksmanship, learn talents that increase perception and ballistics. Yeah, I didn't get any of that. Uh, that's all I can do. All right, space to enter. He missed two. He missed two. We have what I like to call a problem. No, the bonus armor I gave him didn't help at all. Uh, I command you! Be useful! War is my muse. Oh my god. This guy's a raid boss. <laughs> Are you helping at all, Conrad? I don't know that you are. Step by step, I lead. Can I put this on A everybody? Thought. Oh, I can cast this on everyone. Even I won't do that. Wait, what? I'm powerless to act. I can't use voice of command. Alright, whatever. Miss again. Alright, we've done we we've done we've never done any damage. <laughs> Now, I didn't put any... Oh, he dodged. Nice. He dodged again. I did not put any points. In... He dodged three times. You get three attacks? Characters with melee... We... What? I couldn't read that. What suspiciously Characters with melee weapons block adjacent enemies' an ability to perform attacks with ranged Servitors weapons. On the Pistols and shotguns are exactly an exception to the rule. They can be fired point moment. blank. When the rogue trader and their heirs are gathered here, I have blocked all passages between the upper and lower sectors of the residential decks. If this is a deliberate attack, it should stop the culprits from advancing their plan. How long until the game awards? I have no idea. I've never watched it. Uh, what build are you planning on League tomorrow for League Start? Oh man, I love summon builds and totem builds. I'll look at those. Uh, let's see. Continue. Y'all are late. Spread out. No one's allowed to enter the premises. Stations. I'm afraid I must remain here. For Lady Theodora's safety, I have to oversee the execution of these orders personally. I hope you will have no difficulty reaching the observation platform on your own. It is just at the end of this corridor. He gives you a curt bow. Well, it's kind of cool to know I can cast Iron Arm on everyone, every ally in the fight. That's pretty neat. 
plus 10 to melee and toughness, or plus 10 to strength and toughness to everyone. You can open the map to orient yourself. All right, so if I hold down the mouse wheel, I can move the camera around. The wires on the servitor's head are smoldering. It would seem the cause of this malfunction was the short-circuiting of the motive force. Tarantula sentry gun, constructed with the blessing of the Adeptus Mechanicus using a standard template uh, construct in the manufactorums of Kiaba Gamma. Lemon Rust Battle Tank. Reclaimed and restored by the grace of the God Emperor, the first to breach the capital walls during the pacification of Vortex, Vortez Cathon. Violent Alloy, which upon closer examination turns out to be a handcrafted object. Symbols carved of the primitive tool are visible on the surface. Black shard resembling obsidian. If you look closely, you discern a strange, barely perceptible glow inside the artifact. Massive golden amalgam interspersed with sparkling particles. The stone on the pedestal is no doubt solid, but its surface shimmers and changes hue as if someone has captured a piece of turbulent sea within the rock. A strange object resembles sea coral. The porous surface is pitted, a sign it has been underwater. A gray-green crystal with white veins. A low hum can be heard coming from the artifact. They will see. Oh, yes. The exhibit they is unfinished. Another symbol of House see. Von Valancius' valor will be displayed here at some point in the future. Lemon. Yes, lemon tank. Am I going the right way still? Uh, he said at the end of the hall. Which hall did he mean? There was a hall over here, too. There will be no peace in my way. Okay, that door can be interacted with. Okay, I guess I was going the right way. Imagine getting lost in the tutorial chat. The great uh, Grand Void Ship Temple occupies the entire space below the officer's deck and is lit by countless candles and lumens. Lumens. One step at a time amidst the madness. <laughs> Her hair. That is simply irrational, Lady Theodora, says the man dressed in a peculiar garb, his voice tight with tension. His face, half of which covered by sin skin, is twisted in a grimace of displeasure and disbelief. Hey, Jeff. Uh, assimilation into the trade structure would be political and economic suicide, practically an admission of heresy. The tall, gray-haired woman pins him with her gaze, her cybernetic eye flashing crimson. Then sit... <laughs> Imagine in her head, she's like, runangryeye.exe. She had, she had to suggest an alternative that will satisfy me. I have described the situation no worse than my Seneschal could have done. Make a decision. What will you do with Aeon 6 at Althrad? Survey the room. Your first impression of Ed Althrad, who appears to be about 30 years old, is of parchment-like skin stretched over a tightly bundled mass of sinew, implants, and bone. The nervously twitching fingers, the face twisted by a slight tick, and the jerky movements are all signs of some illness or defect that has taken over his physical form. In stark contrast to Edelthrad, Theodora von Valancius's features appear as if they were carved from marble, eternal and indestructible. Head raised high, proud posture, hands clasped casually behind her back, everything seems to emphasize the difference in status between her and Edelthrad. Just a moment. Got jump scared. Someone needs attention. Continue. Behind the two of them, you see two more men. One is a gray-haired officer of impeccable bearing who is studying the contents of his data slate. The other is a behemoth bristling with holsters and baldrics containing all manner of weapons. 
Theodora, our second candidate has joined us. The dry female voice and the powerful feeling of being watched forces you to look at Theodora. The rogue trader is looking straight at you and her gaze like herself is predatory and oppressive. Muck Von Luck, approach and give me your answer. Passive skill test. Your character's skills reflect their knowledge and capabilities. Some dialogue automatically initiate passive skill test. If such a test succeeds, new information will be revealed or a hidden dialogue option will unlock. If your character is traveling with allies, the party member with the highest score in the applicable skill is selected for each given passive skill test. Theodora. Consider this a hypothetical. Aeon 6. A new world on the fringes of the Coronas Expanse. High seismic activity, regular magma eruptions, metamorphic rock deposits, prospects for large-scale mining. The world is populated by natives who worship some heretical underworld spirits that protect those who offer them sacrifices. Flights of fancy, you might say. But attempts to install ore extractors have failed for the second time. The mining crews sent to the planet's surface simply vanished overnight. My question to you is, what would you do with this poisoned treasure? Um, let's see. <laughs> Purge the planet, Jesus. Let's see. Uh... Lore Xenos. Those spirits could well be the native's name for dangerous aliens. I would first verify if that is indeed the case and if the population of Aeon 6 engages in Xeno worship. She arches an eyebrow. Reasonable and prudent. However, chasing after ethereal creatures may prove a rather long and fruitless endeavor. Ethaldred. Apart from Xenos, an untrodden planet might be teeming with myriad horrors that are far more dangerous and difficult to eradicate. I suspect that you, Muck Von Luck, are simply unaware of their existence. Uh... <laughs> I gave a straight answer to a simple question, which, as I understand, was still more than you could do, Edelthrad. The color drains from Edelthrad's face, which distorts his features further. Insolent, ignorant upstart! How dare you! Edelthrad, Theodora. Uh, Theodora's tone renders him silent. I believe I gave you an assignment on this ship. Explain to me, then, why my senior congregator is still dawdling about the officer's deck instead of proceeding to the middle decks to commence the inspection of the compartments in his purview. I beg your forgiveness, Lady Theodora. Your presence has such a profound effect on me that I well forgot the time. <laughs> I gotta use this the next time I get in trouble with Lady Luck Chat. I beg your forgiveness, my lady. Your beauty has such an effect on me. I forgot to do the thing you told me to do with the dishwasher. <laughs> Edelthrad bows ceremoniously and takes his leave without sparing you another look. Theodore's gaze follows him, then she turns to you. So, Muck Von Luck, why are you here? Um... Was it not you who sent for me? She scoffs. You have seeded the opening that was offered to you in a woeful display of meekness. Admittedly, this tendency is equally strong in all who toil in the Emperor's presence. Uh, immutable hierarchy, absolute obedience, lick spitlery, compulsion to please, I value none of these things. From the moment my envoys came for you, the terms of your existence changed. My name is Theodora von Valencius Massimo Afscaris. I am a rogue trader in the service of the god Emperor of Humanity. I keep accidentally slipping my voice into freaking, like, Victor from Vermintide. Not meaning to. It's just happening. Uh, b -b 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 my rights and freedoms are vindicated by a most sacred relic, the Warrant of Trade, kept aboard this very vessel. Mine is the honor to venture into the darkness beyond the Imperium and carry humanity's light where powers wicked and heretical reign and bode death and ruin to us all. It is my decision alone to determine the fate of whatever I find past the bounds of the explored void. Every world I discover, along with all there is to, vo uh, to find therein, Resources, people, riches, and mysteries is mine by right. I command millions of lives, rule over numerous planets, and possess fortunes that no planetary governor or commander could dream of amassing. And you, Muck Von Luck, are one of those with the Von Valancius blood in their veins and a rightful claim to this inheritance when the hour comes. Um, 
One of? Does this mean there are other heirs? Naturally. Some have yet to arrive on board, but you have had the pleasure of meeting one of them. Edelthrad may be somewhat disconcerted by the scale of the responsibilities that may potentially fall upon his shoulders. However, I have a good feeling about him as a candidate. Blood right alone is not enough to earn the high honor of becoming the bearer of a warrant of trade. Nonetheless, your abilities and talents may yet prove useful. If not for the role of Lord Captain, then for that uh, of their closest ally. Theodora sighs and looks away pensively for a brief moment. Alas, even those responsibilities can at times be too challenging for those who share your blood. Kunrad Voigtvir served me many years before he made his mistake. Hmm. Did I hear you correctly? The Master of Whispers is related to you. His kinship to me is most distant, as is yours. Nonetheless, he does bear the name Von Valencius, even as he avoids using it publicly, and as such, strictly speaking, can be considered my heir. That door, however, is closed to him. Voigtervier's presence in his current role is satisfactory, or it used to be at least. If you are satisfied with Edelthrad, then what sense is there in having this conversation? Why are you wasting your time on me? She shakes her head. Impatience. I am rather fond of impatient people. They are not as quick to resign themselves to circumstance and more eager to show initiative. Even if I do choose Edelthrad as my successor, I will still require loyal advisors. The skills and knowledge you acquired in your former life may prove invaluable here in the Coronas Expanse. Just make him Magna. He is now Victor. Yeah. It says in your profile that you bear the brand of sorcery, albeit sanctioned sorcery, that is permitted in the service of the Imperium. I'm accustomed to the presence of psychers at my side. More than that, I value their unique abilities highly. Perhaps that is why I'm so intrigued by Edelthrad's candidacy. A rogue trader psyker could achieve great things indeed. However, psychers are fragile creatures, and as such, I would rather have a replacement standing ready in the event that something happens to Edelthrad. I'm a backup. Moreover, she chuckles slightly, even changing your family name will not rid you of the fame you previously garnered. I hope it will also help you bring glory to the Von Valencius dynasty to which you now belong. Thank you for clarifying. May I ask questions now? The Vox affixed to Theodora's attire suddenly comes to life, but all you can hear is unintelligible noise. She winces, shuts off the transmission, and gives you an imperious nod. I have some time before the navigator gives the signal to initiate the void ship's translation out of the warp and my presence is required on the bridge. Oh, are we in the warp right now? An incident took place in the officer's deck. Some servitors went berserk and attacked the crew. Is that so? Perhaps the Technomats were careless during maintenance. Or it could be the warp playing tricks on us in spite of the Gellerfield. Or perhaps there is something to all the stories about the ship being possessed after all. <laughs> the gray-haired officer gives the rogue trader a look of cautious disapproval. Lady Theodora, for the God Emperor's sake, surely you do not intend to start repeating idle rumors spread around about by uneducated riffraff. Enough, Adelba, Ab Abla, enough, Abe. Such hearsay amuses me. Idira eagerly retells me everything she learns from the whispers of her unseen advisors. She turns to you. This ship is thousands of years old. It has taken enough hidden nooks, manufacturing cogitators, and unused compartments to make ignorant folks speak of specters dwelling inside the bulkheads and plotting against those who yet live. Hmm. What are my current responsibilities? Observe, learn, absorb. It will take time for you to find your bearings aboard this vessel and in your new possession. Position. Eventually, I will find a post that suits you as I did for Edelthrad. Until that time comes, consider yourself my aid. Where is the ship headed? The Rykad system. Domain of the rogue trader Winterscale, one of my peers and rivals. Only three rogue traders exist in the Coronas Expanse. Each of them possesses resources comparable to mine. Perhaps you will one day assist House von Valencius in surpassing both of them in influence and splendor. I see I see the sorry, I set the course for Rycat on the demand, Theodora grimaces. She gives you a stern look, then shrugs. For a very specific reason. Perhaps I shall yet apprise you of the purpose of this voyage, but now is not the time. I this is like a tutorial on Warhammer Universe. This looks like begging. I'm not gonna do that. I have no more questions. In that case, I shall head to. Theodora's Vox awakens once again. This time you pick up shouting. The Lord Captain freezes, listening to the Vox cast, then nods and draws her weapon. Disturbance is reported on the adjacent decks. Seneschal, if the need arises, protect the new blood. She glances at you. It is possible that the chance to prove your worth